the Malay royal genealogy, Sejara Milayu, recorded that Temasek was Singapore's name, before the ancient port kingdom of Singapura was formed. In 1330 a young Chinese merchant named Wang Daiyuan, departed from China on a four-year sea voyage through Southeast Asia and the Indian coast. He sailed for a second time in 1337, although this journey lasted only half as long. Ten years after his travels, Wang Daiyuan completed Description of the Barbarians of the Isles, or Dawi Jilue in Chinese, which compiled details about over a hundred places that he personally visited or heard about. Notably, the book contained three separate references to Temasek, and this made it a key source of Singapore's ancient history. The first of these mentioned a siege on Temasek by a fleet of more than 70 junks from Siam, which caused its inhabitants to barricade themselves behind their moated settlement for a month. British discovery of the ruins of a defensive line at the foot of Fort Canning Hill in 1819, validated this account. The second was the passage, which in riddle-like manner told of Long Yaman, or Dragon Teeth Strait, a sea channel intersected with two mountains of the Temasek natives that look like dragon's teeth, and having a waterway in the middle. This attracted much scholarly attention with its details about a settlement under a chieftain, where many types of precious goods were traded, and people from China lived among its men and women. Historians see this as proof of the Sejara Milayu's portrayal of Singapura as a populous place frequented by merchants from every quarter. In 1934, Roland Braddle popularized a proposal by Warren D. Barnes that Keppel Harbour was Long Yaman, the narrow waterway that separates Telok Blanga from the isle now named Sentosa. A pair of pointed granite outcrops once guarded the western entrance of this busy passageway. One of them was on the Singapore mainland, and it was nicknamed Batu Berlaya or Sail Rock by the Malays and Lot's Wife by the Europeans. The other stood on the opposite shore at Sentosa. These two rocks were blown up in 1848 as they were deemed to be a danger to navigation. Many historians readily accepted the identifications of Keppel Harbour with Long Yaman, and Batu Berlaya and its companion with its two mountains. However, the same Chinese passage also spoke about the people of Longyamen being addicted to piracy. It even gave a vivid account of how they attacked trading vessels sailing from the Indian Ocean in swarms of two or three hundred boats, and ruthlessly killed their crews to make off with the cargoes. The question about the Longyamen people's engagement in piracy is deepened by Wang Daiyuan's third insight on Temasek which was a characterization of a population in North Sumatra as hardened pirates, but second in notoriety to Temaseks. How could Long Yaman, or Temasek, be the home of merchants and pirates at the same time? In Braddle's mind, this was an exaggerated picture of the dangers of piracy in Singapore's waters, for otherwise Singapura could not have thrived. But why would the author of Dawi Jilue exaggerate? And how could he have confused a pair of rocks for mountains? Dawi Jilue is not the sole Chinese historical source that reported about Temasek and Long Yaman. A cartographic representation of Temasek is found in the Mao Kuan map, which is a set of drawings believed to be based on navigational information, gathered during the famed Ming Dynasty treasure voyages in the early 15th century. The charts also displayed a set of directions for sailing from Karaman Island on the western end of the main Singapore Straits, to Pedra Branca Rock on its eastern end. These instructions were given little notice, until J.V.G. Mills made a careful study of them alongside corresponding itineraries in three Chinese rutters, also from the Ming era. The conclusion that Mills reached from his comparisons was that Long Yaman was not Keppel Harbour, but the Singapore Straits. Notably, two of these rutters reported about a Temasek gate, which vessels travelling along Long Yaman from either Karaman or Pedra Branca had to sail through. It is apparent from the instructions that Temasek Gate was a channel within the Singapore Straits itself. This fulfills Wang Daiyuan's intimation about Long Yaman having a waterway in the middle. As its name dictates, Temasek Gate must lie within Singapore's limits. Was Temasek Gate not Keppel Harbour? If Keppel Harbour was not Long Yaman, it follows that its two rocks were not the mountains related by Wang Daiyuan. So where were these two mountains of Longyamen 